Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Leslie presents. And now your host, Paul Leslie. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure we introduce you to this woman, Cheryl Barnes. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I think most stories are best from the beginning. What was life like growing up? My musical life, my whole life was wonderful, and my musical life was really pretty fantastic because I was always surrounded by every kind of music that was playing on the radio and on records and everything. My father and mother exposed us to to jazz, to classical, to polka music, to rock and roll, sort of. My father sort of forbade that in our house, but we managed to listen to it anyway. So the musical life, just it started from day one as even at the smallest age. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and you hear beautiful music, dreams playing on the radio, and it's like breathing and, and all. So it was great. And as I was in elementary school and coming along, starting to sing in little groups and that sort of thing. So it was a good start, a good launching into a life of music. Who were the singers that you enjoyed the the absolute most? Well, of course, the you know all of the traditional wonderful greats, um, of course, as Ella Fitzgerald and and Tara Vaughn and Peggy Lee and this you know all the of the greats of that time. And then coming forward, I've always I have been influenced mostly spiritually and emotionally by a wonderful singer named Carmen Lundy because of her innovation and her just beautiful talent and the freedom that she shares in her music and in, in the way that she she's a wonderful instrumentalist as well, the way that she plays and sings. And then a lot of the newer young people, younger people that are that are singing now I'm, I've really been enjoying and and as well. And I've been influenced greatly by many instrumentalists, especially during the years that I was starting to sing jazz, you know, like Herbie Hancock and Freddie Hubbard and a lot of horn players of the time and other players. It's just, uh, it, it was like taking it, like breathing and taking in the, the, from the atmosphere all of these, these great musical influences from many areas uh, in classical music as well, not just in, in jazz. But in, and I started out as a rock and roll singer <laughs> back in, 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 my, in Great Falls, Montana, so I enjoyed that part of it, too. <laughs> you have had the opportunity to work with a lot of great artists. Can you tell me who you have been the most in awe of? Among those that, that I had the pleasure of working with and, and relating to and more of a conversation and all, Della Reese was, I had a television show uh, along with a, gentleman named Bubba Jackson invited me to co-host the TV show with him in Denver. And we used to feature the visiting wonderful artists who came through town performing at the various clubs. And anyway, Della Reese was on one of those shows. And I also sang as the opening act at the club. So we had an opportunity to know each other. And I learned so much from her as a performer and as a, just a, as a singer, but also as an entertainer. She influenced me tremendously in that way, and she was very generous. That stayed with me and has stayed with me through my life and my career. And then there were other people that I worked with. Um, I met Linda Hopkins and have gotten to know her somewhat, and she's an incredible human being, and she's still going strong, and she just has such a, a legacy to share such a history of her life and uh, and a wonderful story of of her life and it it certainly influenced me just to be to savor everything because then that sort of it, it not sort of it does influence me it helps me to just be open in my music and and free to share you know just to go to the depths and throw it out there on the table this is it and it's there have been some wonderful artists who've influenced me in that way and been very helpful to me tell us about the making of this latest album listen to this what made you want to create this album well this came from i hadn't recorded in a number of years and it came from a desire to 
make you know just make a record of my work as I am now uh, in these last few years because it took us five years to to finish this project. I wanted to. I told my husband. I said, well, who's a keyboardist and pianist? He's also a, a, a physician, a medical doctor. And I told Phil. I said, you know, I really would like to just make a CD. I didn't really have any particular idea about what would happen with it afterward or anything. I just wanted to to record this. And what started as, uh, okay, well, that'll be great. Let's do that. We'll get all our wonderful musician friends. I live in L.A., so I have a, a wealth of the greatest musicians, uh, some of the greats from all over the world who are our friends and musical associates, you know, who are willing and happy to participate. And, and we started out with, well, we'll just pick some nice tunes and go from there. And this thing evolved because the gentleman that we hired to produce the CD is a gentleman named Ron Coleman, and Ron is just, his vision, he loved my voice, and he came up with ideas about how to, where we could, a direction to go in to be as authentic as possible, for me to be as authentic artistically as possible, and to, and I use the word free because that's just how I feel about my singing for, for myself, and so that it developed as it started out just as a desire to, to make some music to, to have as a record of my life and musical life at this time. And it just, it, it really did evolve. We could have stopped this recording and, and put this out three years ago and it would have been a really nice CD. It would have been great. It would have been very certainly comparable to anything else, if not better that, uh, out there. But boy, we just kept artistically coming up with, okay, let's tweak this and that. And I guess you could do that in art and many things anyway. You could continue to keep changing and changing and uh, finding some some area to make it better or, or whatever. But after a while, <laughs> you have to finally say, okay, it's done. And we did. It, it wasn't that we threw our hands up and said, all right, it's enough is enough. We, it was it was done, and uh, we we evolved through the process, and we're very I'm very happy with the results because it is it, it's me it, it does represent exactly many many facets of my being and it manifests itself musically. Well, the title track, listen to this. Tell us about that song. It's a very interesting song. This song started out, my husband wrote this song, Phil Cabasso, and he wrote the song originally as an instrumental called Blues in C, sort of. And so we started doing that on some of our gigs, and I would just sing, you know, just scat along with it and sing the line, and but with no lyrics. And I guess that influenced him or inspired him to write lyrics to the song, and I didn't know he was doing this, um, uh, and... And then when he came up with the lyrics, I was just flabbergasted because I said, how do you know anything about this sort of thing? <laughs> because it's sort of like the story of the girl, you know, you go out girls night out and you go to the bar and he's a single girl. And, and I remember these days for myself, you go, you know, to have a drink and to dance and just have a nice time. You're not really looking for anything. And then there are these kind of, there are a few guys around in the bar that are the losers and so you try to don't make eye contact, try not to, you know, hook up with this guy because this is this could be a nightmare. And it's just so fun. I I love the song because it's a lot of fun. And and the lot and the people who've heard it, a number of people who've heard it have said how they can truly relate to it and we just kinda of laugh. And I'm sure that it's probably the other way for men too. You know, you there's just the people that you just kinda of don't wanna glom on to or have glom on to you when you're just sort of trying out trying to have a good time. So it came out as it came came about as a kind of a lark. It developed into to what it is now. We made it into a big band arrangement. Our special guest is Cheryl Barnes. We're talking about her latest album, Listen to This. What about the song Afternoon in Harlem? Now, I love that song. That song was written by a very good friend of mine, a very wonderful songwriter named Mark Winkler and his partner, Marilyn Harris, uh, writing partner. This song is just so evocative to me. Um, I grew up in a, an atmosphere of very elegant women in my family, uh, elegant men and women, but the women of my family, as I think of my grandmother and her sisters and, and my mother and, and my aunt, everybody, they were all so just 
suave and lovely, elegant women and, and gracious and graceful. And this song reminded me of them. And then it reminded me also of a couple of singers whom I have had the privilege of knowing, one of whom I mentioned, Linda Hopkins. And this song makes me think of her because she's had such a, an incredible musical history. And, and so then this song talks about the life of this woman who's, uh, who's been a singer and who's had fame and, and respect and renown and, and, and describes her home and just uh, her whole beautiful life. Uh, so, uh, and so for this, this younger artist to visit with this older artist and, uh, on that afternoon in Harlem, and it really touched me when I first heard the song. It was just like, oh boy, this is, this is real. <laughs> so that's when Mark presented that song to me. I was very, very pleased and delighted and, and immediately uh, related to it. What is the best thing about being Cheryl Barnes? Oh, <laughs> well, that's a pretty good question. My goodness. I like myself. And the best thing about me being me is that I think I enjoy my life. I enjoy my life. There's a, I'm a very, a very fortunate person in that I'm able to, I, I look at things mostly from the bright side and seriously from the comedic side or the, or the humor, the side of humor, even in, you know, in situations where, you know, things are not so bright and cheery. And, uh, and I think that I'm a, a survivor. So, uh, because of that, the, of those kinds of strengths, and I just wow, that you, you've blown me away with that question. <laughs> it it kind of tickles me. I like that. I'll have to think about that some more. <laughs> that, that that was something that a psychiatrist or somebody should have asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next question is kind of open ended for uh -huh. for anyone who listens to this broadcast. What do you want to say to the people who are listening in? I hope that the music that I make has a positive effect. All songs are not going to appeal to all people, but that there's something here that truly touches you in some way or other. It, it, because that is important to me to, 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 when I sing that I am, that I am, um, delivering and, and, uh, portraying the truth of myself. And it took me many, I used to always think that when I would be singing, it should be perfect. Every note should be right on, the produced in the most magnificent way and so forth. And I still think that, except I also know that sometimes worrying about the technical production loses the, the true depth and, and truth and emotion of what it is that I feel. And I think that it's very important. I, I want you to get me. And so I hope that, that the listener gets what this singer is trying to convey, which is the honesty of myself and, and through my music. Okay, here's another one of those questions. My last question. Who is Cheryl Barnes? Who am I? I am a very happy, very grateful woman. I am an artist, and I am proud to say that I am an artist, and I am privileged to be able to share the art that I have. I didn't start out that way thinking about, it just was sort of normal. You, I sing, this is what I do. And I didn't really think much about what effect it had on others. But I am a person who wants to, I'm not trying to save the world or anything like that, but I am someone who wants to share authenticity and hope that that will have some positive effect for whomever it, it reaches. Well, that's a great answer. I really appreciate you doing this interview. Well, thank you very much. Wow, I, I'm going to write these questions down just for my own <laughs> <laughs> my own therapy sessions. Um, that's pretty cool. I and I'm I'm whatever. I'm answering the questions as honestly as I can. It's uh, just that's really great. <laughs> I will never ever forget you, Paul, because I'm going to. You have really thrown a. Not a challenge, but, you know, very thought-provoking. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you very much. You have a good one. Well, thank you so much, and Happy New Year. I hope to see you sometime. Happy New Year to you. Maybe you'll make it uh, out to Atlanta sometime. 
<laughs> yeah, I'd love to. I've never been there actually, so that might be that will definitely be a destination. I think Atlanta would love you. Well, thank you. Well, if I'm there, you, we'll we'll certainly see each other. That's for sure. Okay. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. Bye bye, and have a great Bye. day.